Guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is a terribly special, special video. What's going on? We're gonna put some time into the design work on the LJ. This is the very first episode dedicated to this Jeep LJ. My name is Caleb Peck, and these are my older brothers. Brady and Alex. We were raised in the back seat of a Jeep, and since we were little kids, we've been trying to build our own. So we're gonna show you how we build, drive, live, and breathe off-road. It is no secret that Jeeps cost a fortune, especially these days. So, to keep the Jeep parts rolling in, we actually have to work. We can't just film videos every day. So I'm on my way to go help Brady working on this house that we're building, and he said that if I can help him get this done, we can go film the next video. So I'm bringing you guys along to show you what we have to do excruciatingly to help afford this Jeep addiction. If you're wondering what's wrong with my head, I, uh, well, there's a lot of stuff wrong with my head. I smacked it on the bottom of a pool in St. George this last weekend. I smacked it on the bottom of the pool. It really hurt. That's what that is, if you're wondering. Yeah, maybe you didn't even notice. How long is this going to take? I don't know. Depends on how fast we work. Well, and I forgot that this is full of mud because it just rained really hard yesterday. So we'll have you get in the hole. I've had it. We're going to take this uh, mule tape. It's like really heavy duty string that we put through the conduit. And that's this inch and a quarter inch pipe that the actual wire travels through. It goes down through the trench over to the house. Tell the fine ladies and gentlemen what this thing is. What are we running power to out here? This is a well. Yeah, baby, come on, honey, I'm new! I'm new! I don't know what to do! Let's make this happen so we can go get started on your Jeep. Is that what this episode's about? Yeah, what the heck you think? You came here to film the first episode of my Jeep? I did. From an outsider looking in, it looks like you know what you're doing here. Uh, I was just about to tell everybody, don't take advice from me. This uh, this here could very well come out in the middle of the pole. So That's going to make it really fun to get the mule tape back through this. Probably a lot of viewers on here that know all these special knots, you know, so when it pulls, it pulls tighter. I just tie it like a double knot on my shoe and then we're just gonna wrap it with this tape so hopefully this knot stays together we found out that when we got here there's a bunch of dirt and stuff in our conduit because it rained so hard a big mud chunk fell right in our conduit so uh hoping this goes through <laughs> freaking go i was nervous when that uh, i didn't want to pull just getting these tied in and then uh and we'll have water let's go <laughs> it's jeep time it's jeep time later lots of people have asked what is the the white jeep in the back with the big dent in the side oh yeah what's going on with this thing they've seen some cardboard mock-ups we've been in the works for a long time with this bad boy we drove clear to oklahoma clear to oklahoma to buy this. This. tell the audience what she is i'll just quick give the run around i've had mostly cjs my whole life i love cjs they're awesome lightweight can do about anything to them but everybody knows when you get in a cj versus say a jk feels really loose the steering ain't nice there's no luxury i wanted a little bit more street friendly i wanted something pure luxury to get in and be able to hopefully still hang with the big boys but kind of be a, a little bit more luxurious it was between a jl a built cj with pure custom aluminum everything 
a TJ. I went through all of them and I said, you know what? Let's do an LJ. Just Cave's got the TJ. We've had TJs. We've had JKs. Can't afford a JL, but we could afford an LJ after selling the one that I had last time. that's helping fund this. So we got some parts here and this is the beginning stages of the Jeep LJ. All right, what kind of parts are we working with right now? Yeah. It's obviously the LJ tub. Well, I don't know, I've kicked around maybe doing an Aqualoo aluminum tub. Oh. I'm pretty sure this is the tub. I, I kind of like the TJ stock dash. We, me and Caleb will be running the same dash. This LJ has zero rust. It came from Oklahoma. Minus that dent on the other side, it is like in really, really good shape. I will show you one thing though. I need a smack for this, bad. <laughs> so I bought a backpack. Oh here, yeah. And I cut this out. Wow. He wasn't really realizing that it, it we were gonna sick. that we were gonna run a custom back half. Yeah, that that one that didn't really go through your mind. We're running a Peck Brothers off-road back half on this. And, and possibly whole chassis. Where those exit out, it ain't in the right spot. <laughs> and uh, I am not welding my corner armor all together to cover that. So we gonna do some body work. There gonna be some body work. We're gonna slap some bondo, but hey. We ain't body work guys at all. So if you guys see us out wheeling when this Jeep's done in about one year and you can see <laughs> that. <laughs> the problem. We don't even wanna hear about it, okay? No, we already know. What we got here is some 42 inch sticky competitions traps for a 17. A lot of people love the traps. I got a pretty good deal on them. So I bought them and uh, they seem pretty sticky. I mean, check that out, Gabe. Okay? That's pretty sticky. That's pretty soft. I'll bet they're definitely stickier than my SXs. I'd imagine so, <laughs> but those aren't even gonna be like, those will probably just be like maybe a rock competition tie or something, but we want to run, we got to run super swampers on this thing. This hood will probably stay. It's in probably good enough shape because this kind of stuff's going to get cut out. What about the fenders? The fenders I bought from a really cool guy local here that I found on our local classifieds. And he's a huge Jeep guy, he, just down the road. So we bought these from him and they're clean as a pin. They're not an ounce of rust on them either. And I bought them so we could mock them up. And guess what? Caleb. What? I'm down there looking in the yard and your freaking fenders are down there from your Jeep. They are? Yeah, you told me you got rid of them. I thought I sold them or something. If anybody needs a green set of fenders, let me know, cause I guess we have some. I'll Thanks. make you scream and deal on them. This is where it starts to get spicy. Are you going underneath here? Yeah, I'm working on it. The headlights, they're Amazon specials, I'm pretty sure. Oh yeah. Those are definitely not gonna stay. Those were like, 30 bucks. Probably. The grill is probably good enough. It even has the VIN tag still on it. And it is a clean title. So I think it was a pretty good buy. The only thing that is going to stay is probably this. The Dutchman's Treasure! Wow! Ooh! What is that cat? This right here is an L86. It's an LT Gen 5. It's not considered an LS, it's considered an LT motor. And she's um, a six too. All sorts of ponies underneath this cat. This look like a piece of crap to you? You have them spinning tires, do you? Well, I hope so. I hope it runs. <laughs> if it runs. I got it on eBay and you never know. You no, can, so. you don't. It does have an eight speed transmission behind it as well. Everybody's saying that I'm nuts for putting that in here. Yeah, and you're, I'm sure you're nuts. all of you guys watching have an opinion about that. I have an opinion. I have two opinions. One, it's gonna suck or, or else it's gonna be really good. So it's gonna be one of the two. Those are my thoughts. So we're gonna put it in, we're gonna make it work and see if we like it. Cause we're gonna have tap shift and everything so we can select any gear that we want. Wait, what do you got for a transfer case? That's what I was getting to. What we got for a transfer case is a Atlas 2.0. So an Atlas 2, which is a 2.11 to one ratio. This 
8L90 has a very, very, very low first gear to where to the point where people that are running them and running say a 3.8 or 4.3 or even a 3.0, their first gear is not even usable in low range, not even their second. It'll be very similar to what Caleb's Jeep is in low range at first. We're hoping that 2.0 isn't too high in low range, um, but it is the Atlas race case. Um, really the only difference between the race case and the other one is um, a little bit bigger idler, a quarter inch bigger idler, and has super finished gears. So a little bit less heat from the friction in those gears, help it cool a little better, I guess. We upgraded to that because I had to wait for eight months to get the dang thing anyway, so I figured I might as well. First time ever, we don't have to like swap out input shafts. No. We don't have to. I'm stoked. Pull broken teeth out of the bottom. Go to the junkyard to get a new yeah, we seal. Ain't, we ain't dealing with that on this because I've been saving my pennies for that because that was pretty important to me. Everything else will be really makeshift and hillbilly, but. <laughs> but um, it's gonna have a nice transfer it'll have case. It'll a really nice transfer case. This right here is a Curry 70. This thing is what they call bulletproof. And I don't know why Brady didn't just put any old junkyard axles under it. But if he busts this before I bust my 60, he gets a thousand dollar reward. Wow! We're running the big old huge Reed Super Kingpin outers on it. They're 35 spline. I don't know what locker he's running on him, but this is what we have to start with. He got a screaming deal on him, so. Let me tell you the good deal that Caleb just said that I got on these axles. I thought it was a great deal. Well, they're about 20 grand new, so keep that in mind when he's talking about his good well, they, deal in they quotations. Were, they, were, they weren't complete. I had no out or anything. Came with axle shafts, but one's a rear, one's a front. They were for like 90 something inches wide and we needed to be 72. Well, I open it up and these are said to be brand new, never used. And that's what everything looks like in there. Ah! What do you mean that's squirt some WD on that? We're good. Yeah, the whole entire carrier, The D, this is a Detroit. I mean, there's all sorts of rust. Flip, this thing looks horrible. <laughs> The whole axle needs to be like sandblasted. What do they call a media blast. Media blasted. So it turned a great deal into uh, a very decent, okay deal. So. <laughs> How much did you pay for them? How much did I pay? I paid three grand. Three grand. Three grand. And, and normally just fronts. the lug nuts from Curry is three grand. Pretty close. <laughs> But that pretty much sums up all the parts that we have to work with right now. Everything else is pretty much up in the air. We have a pretty good idea what we want to use, but that's all we got right now, which that's not a lot coming from a guy that just barely did it. It's a good start. It's though. a good start. I mean, there's a lot of big stuff on, off of our list right now, but there is a lot still that we need to buy. And those little things. Oh, they, they add, add up. up. Yep. Real they quick. add right up. Caleb knows that. All oh too. yeah. Yep. All right, well, let's get in there, get some paper down, and let's start designing this Jeep. this and we started talking about problems that we both ran into and it started bringing back old memories of nightmares of problems that came trying to build custom chassis. We're really wanting to build this lower section of the frame to house the two lower link mounts like this. See this lower portion of the frame is going to house these lower link mounts and then it's going to take off back up to catch the upper on both sides. The rest is just kind of gonna be really what it is. This is about what we want it to look like, but it will change depending on how it looks when we get in there. This is basically the layout of what the chassis is gonna be. On my Jeep, I was able to use this section of, of the stock TJ because it worked really well, and I'm running this Moto Built kit, but with the way that we're gonna do this, 
it won't work. The, the stock frame, nothing will work on the stock frame. Then we move up towards the upper part of the rig, and I don't care what Brady says, we're putting a bulkhead on this because they're just way too sick not to. And we're gonna have somebody that knows how to really weld, really well, weld that one on. We got our triple bypass shocks here, or quadruple bypass shocks here. I don't really know how we're gonna fit those, but they're on the picture here. I don't know how we're gonna afford them either. I don't know how we're gonna afford them, but... But they're in the picture. They're in the picture, so they're probably gonna end up here. We got this seat. I'm not that good at drawing a seat. It's kind of weird to draw a seat from the side. Cage is very similar to, to the way that mine is, the style. But we, we need to figure out how to get a radius in this and in this because cages these days they just gotta have radiuses in them we're in 2022 here. we're in 2022 the cage gotta have a radius in it we gotta figure out where to get a radius roller does harbor freight have them harbor freight's got them but i don't know if harbor freight's gonna dig a two inch piece of dom that's that's all i got right there this this is this is what i'm feeling this is what I got. These are the chicken scribbles or whatever you call it of the oldest Peck brother here. Okay, so we're gonna try to dump the exhaust out this side, passenger side, and uh, we need to be able to get enough room to fit a three inch pipe between the body and where this frame rail comes up. So we've gotta be real strategic where this starts heading up, how steep of an angle to get that to fit. We're trying to keep this really symmetrical somewhat with the door. Let's talk about some of these body lines up in here. Yeah, this is kind of the fun part of the LJ. We're gonna, we're gonna give the credit where credit's due and Wide Open Design did a Jeep uh, for Juicy Motorsports that looks a lot similar to this. It's mainly where we got the idea, but we've always wanted to tinker with doing something a little bit different back there because we're running such huge tires and going so low that if you notice on like Caleb's, he doesn't have hardly any body right here, which is okay. But with this one, we kind of want to give it this look to kind of give it that, I don't know, race car-y look um, to tie in the cage and tie in everything else we're trying to do here. So we're going to shoot for this. The unique part of what we're going to do here is it's going to work fully with a fast back frameless soft top. As well as we've never seen anybody do this, um, this was actually Caleb's idea to take, and normally a high line fender will be where this comes, you know, like this, there's a body line on the TJ and the LJ, it just goes straight and people will keep them you know, carry this line for the top of their front fenders. He's thinking we ought to kind of match the rear here and start coming up with it right here and follow that hood. So these fenders will be real fun to make. So that's the rundown of the LJ plans. In one year, this Jeep will look like these pictures. It'll be done, it'll be painted. We'll have the final touches on everything in one year, in one year. <laughs> what are you calling? I'm not going to say because there's no such thing as a timeline on G. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? To where we're pulling out of the garage. I'm going to say we are going to be hard pressed to make trail here on next year. That will be a push to make trail here on next year. He said it, not me. But we'll see. Maybe it'll go a lot quicker than mine. I don't know. You're already married. But there is some big things done here, which is nice. There is a lot. We don't even need to build the motor. No, we don't need. We don't need to drive to Oklahoma. We, we know a lot more about stuff. Stuff. We know things. Yeah, we know what's gonna work and what isn't gonna work. We know where to get our grinding wheels. Yeah, where you need a lot. We're gonna spend a lot of money. If on anybody wheels. on here knows a good place to get wholesale grinding wheels, will buy about ten thousand at a time. They'll yeah. last about a week. You could so. fill a garbage bag, like a big black garbage bag, clear full. That's how many we need. Cool. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. Please keep following this build. Subscribe. If you are not subscribed, click that button right now. If you want to see this LJ get done, subscribe to this channel and get notified every time we put a video up of this build and also of us wheeling. We got some good stuff in store. You guys better not go anywhere. Thank you so much for watching. Peck Brothers Off-Road.